So let's code out our optimal solution. We know that what we're utilizing is the two pointer technique, but here we actually have to use a new coding pattern in order to capture what we're trying to achieve. So we're going to initialize three values first. The first is P1. And this P1 is going to start at the beginning of the array. So it's going to start at zero. We're also going to initialize P2. And this is going to start at the end of the array, which is heights dot length minus one. Because remember, the length is going to be a number where it's not indexed at zero. But we want the last index. So heights dot length minus one gives us that last value. Then we also want to keep track of max area. And let's make it zero to begin with. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use a while loop. And what we're going to say is that we want to check while P1 is less than P2. Then we want to run some logic. And at the very end, we need to decide whether or not we want to move P1 towards the center or we want to move P2 towards the center. So inside of our while loop, the code here is going to be the same as our previous, which is get the area and then compare it to the max area and store the greater one. So here we're going to do the same thing we did last time, which is we're going to get the height and it's going to be math.min of our heights at P1 and our heights at P2. Then we want to get our width, which is also going to be the exact same. It's going to be P2 minus P1. And then we want to get the area. And the area is going to be height multiplied by the width. And now our max area is going to update also. We're going to get the math.max between our current max area as well as our newly generated area. This logic of the comparison, getting the area, exact same. But here we're going to do that check where we're going to see which value was greater. So we want to say, if the value of heights at P1 is less than or equal to the heights at P2. So let's just account for the fact that if the numbers are equal, we're going to move the left one. It really doesn't matter where the equal side of this goes. But we're just going to say that as long as it's lesser than or equal to, then we want to move P1 forward. If this is not the case, then what we want to do is move P2 towards the center. And this is pretty much all the logic we need. So here, let's just make sure to close our while loop. And let's also close our actual function. But first we got to return. We got to remember to return our new max area. And this is our function code. So now that we've coded out our solution, let's step through the code and see what's happening. So here I've moved the code we just wrote into its own REPL file. You can use this REPL file, which is always in your resources folder or you can use your own handwritten code. And what I want you to do is actually try first. Pause the video and try it yourself. Just take our array that we were working with and run through this code and see if you understand what's happening at every step. Once you've done that, you can come back and either go to the next video if you're fairly certain you understand what's happening. Otherwise, I'm gonna walk through it myself. So here inside, let's just console.log out our initial values that we've initialized for P1, P2, and max area. Once we're inside our while loop, we want to console.log the P1, P2 indice values because we just want to see what's happening. And then down here, I'm going to console.log out both the height, the width, and the area calculations. Then we're going to console log what our new max area is. And here we don't need to console.log the if statement because P1 and P2 are being logged up here anyways. So we're going to see what happens. At the very bottom, we'll return the max error, which is getting console logged out anyways. So we'll see when our function ends. And now if we run our code, 
we'll see that we initialize P1, P2 at 0 and 5, which are the indices of the start and the end of our arrays, respectively. Max error, of course, initializes at 0, and we step into our first instance of our while loop, logging out the same P1, P2 values of 0 and 5. Now, once we hit this log here, we see that the height calculation is 4, because the lesser between 4 and 9 is 4. The width then is 5, because 5 minus 0 is 5, and then the area is 4 times 5, which gives us 20. So these are the same steps that we did when we did our logical step through before we did the coding. Here we see that our new max area gets set to 20, and P1 increments, because height at P1 is less than height at P2, since 4 is smaller than 9. So P1 moves over by 1, P2 is still 5, and then we calculate new heights. The new lesser height between the 8 and the 9 is the 8. So width is set to 4 because it's 5 minus 1. New area is 32, and our max area is 32. P1 then increments to 2, which now points at this 1. And now height is set to 1, as we are seeing. The width is set to 3 because it's 5 minus 2, which gives us 3. And then the area is 3 times 1, which gives us 1. Max area is still 32, because 32 is greater than our area of 3 that we've calculated. And then we shift P1 over to 3, which is now this 2 value. P2 stays at 5. And then height is 2. Width is 2. Our new area is 4. Max area stays the same. P1 is going to increment one more time to 3. And then P1 is 4. P2 is 5. New height on our P1 is 3. Width is 5 minus 4, which is 1. The area is 3, and our max area doesn't change. And then finally, we return with our max area of 32. So here we see that our code still works for this. And let's just double check to make sure it also works if we have an empty array. We see it returns 0. And if we input just one value, we still return 0. So all of our code still works for all of our edge cases. So here we are back in lead code. And I have pasted our optimal solution into this answer space. It's still the same question, number 11, container with most water. And here if we submit, let's see how we do. So we see that our time is now 40 milliseconds, which is in the 99.97th percentile of speed. Our memory says 35.6, but this is one of those nuances with leak code, and it's less the fact that our memory actually got much worse. If you actually think about how the memory storage works, as I mentioned in terms of scalability. None of our variables that we're storing in memory actually scale with the size of the input. So this is definitely O of one space. Don't look at this space percentage here and think that you're actually doing something wrong. This is just one of the quirks of leak code. But the main thing is the actual evaluation of how your space consumption is in your function. This is a very crucial thing because we are really trying to work on our ability to understand what our time and space complexities are versus just looking at these percentages and then judging how well we're doing off of it. The key here, though, is that we need to look at the space here. We know that everything is pretty much just a static variable. It doesn't actually grow any larger. We're not using any arrays, we're not using any growing objects slash hash maps. So theoretically speaking, everything here is O of 1 space. That's just a little caveat I want to mention about this percentage. If you see that, don't let it throw you off. Again, just evaluate by your code. So now that we have our optimal solution for this question, we've got a pretty good understanding of a new technique, which is the two-pointer technique, as well as a rational framework of thinking about how to move those pointers when it comes to looking at a question and then thinking deeply about what impacts the solution of that question. Let's apply this to a harder question now. We notice that this question we just did was a medium question. The first one we did before was an easy question. And the next question we're going to do is a hard question. I don't want you to let these throw you off too much. It is a good guideline for what level of question you should work on. But at the same time, a lot of these ideas, I want to show you that they build upon each other and they're compounding. So don't let the difficulty throw you off from taking a chance at trying and thinking about the question, because that's what we're going to do with the next one.